Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to the Future History Project. It's been a while, but I will be completing the project, and this should be week 32, but we've long passed uh, week 32. Uh, and so I'll dispense uh, in the uh, titles of the videos uh, the week, but I will, well, I'll have it there, but it won't be part of the thing, uh, part, the main part of the title. And uh, it'll be the, the book that we're dealing with in that in that uh, video. And this happens to be this time Caliban by Roger McBride Allen. It was published in 1993, uh, just a year after Isaac Asimov had died. And it is set in um, his future history universe. And it follows roughly at some point after... Uh, robots and empire. Uh, there's no exact date, but because uh, Aurora, um, not Aurora, but um, Solaria has sort of fallen and disappeared, uh, that um, is is mentioned in here. So, uh, so, but it, it, it the action of Caliban takes place on a planet called Inferno. It's a spacer world. But they are having trouble with their terraforming, and it is going backwards. Uh, and so settlers have come to help. So they are in partnership to try to save the planet, or are they? That's a bit of a, a question, but they seem to be there to, to help. Now, uh, first and foremost, it is a... Murder mystery, well, not murder so much, but a mystery novel, a crime novel, and uh, it it's got to do with the sheriff and his aide, uh, Donald, which is a a robot, and uh, the there are new types of robots being created finally after thousands and thousands of years. Uh, they've up until now, they've used what they call an antiquated uh, technology of the positronic brain because that hasn't changed in the thousands of years since it was created. Now, they've created, or a scientist has created um, a new type of brain, a gravitonic brain, which does not require as as a... Um, structural m measure the three laws of robotics it's a blank slate and the three laws can be inserted into the gravitonic brain but in a less obtrusive way because the three laws of ro robotics take up so much of the sort of computing uh, that's not the right, right word, but the power, the brain power uh, for it to be, because it's infused in every aspect of it. Uh, so, but that creates problems. You can create then a robot that has no laws, and Caliban is that robot. Um, I won't get into too much detail, but it, it starts out with he wakes up, he doesn't know much about himself. Uh, but he's standing over a body, and uh, there is blood that's pooling around his feet. So he just walks out. He leaves. So it's clear right away, you know, there's something strange about this robot because he doesn't seem to be concerned that a human is injured or possibly dead. She wasn't dead. She was hit on the head, and she conveniently has amnesia. I use the word conveniently because I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, so they think that it's possible that this robot, Caliban, uh, had committed the crime. And he's on the run. And he's being chased. And he doesn't know what's going on. He's learning as he's going along learning about humans, learning about the planet, and the planet's Inferno, and he's in the city Haiti. So there's all the uh, Dante uh, sort of names for everything. 
there's an island called Purgatory and so forth. So, but I won't get into the spoilers of who actually, you know, who did what and, and, you know, who committed the crime and everything. The book is sort of, it. that's the structure of the sense it's a, it's a crime novel. But it's a little more than that. Um, it's kind of interesting because it starts out with a quote or a purported quote, quote from um, a scholarly history called Early History of Colonization by Sh uh, Shahir Vadid, Bailey World University Press, uh, SE 1231. So it's like 1,231 years into, I'm, I'm assuming, the uh, settler um, t um, uh, time uh, calendar. So, and it talks about that there's, you know, there's always, there, there's this problem between the settlers and, and the spacers, but Inferno was an experiment of trying to have them cooperate. And they seem to be cooperating to a certain extent, but there are tensions throughout. And that is a big part of it. There's a lot of political t uh, tensions um, and the cultural tensions between the settlers and the, and the spacers. Uh, because as we know from previous stories, the spacers, uh, you know, in, in, uh, embrace, um, you know, robots and, and they have long lives, uh, because, uh, because of technology and everything, but they sort of have lost the will to strive for new things. And that's a part of this too, where, uh, there's, there, there's a robot to do everything for you. And, uh, sort of very put you wrap you in cotton wool basically so you never do anything that could possibly harm yourself uh you don't even think of doing anything that could possibly harm yourself and you the robots do everything right down to the point where there's the one story of uh, a robot's job is to stand there hold the toothbrush for you and then brush your teeth when uh you know you need it brushed and that's the purpose of that robot overkill in other words um so the settlers you know don't have any of this and, and there's this frankenstein complex of how you know uh, robots will kill and destroy and there's there's all sorts of this stuff that sort of crops back up uh in in the story um but also too um it talks about how uh, well, that's that's one of the reasons why the spacers are sort of disappearing. They're they're going to be wiped out in a sense. They're just going to fade away uh, because of the robots and the spacers will take over. Uh, no, sorry, the, the the spacers will fade away and the settlers will take over. Not sure what I said there, but no, it's the spacers will fade away and the settlers will take over. But they are working on this planet together uh, to try to solve the uh, ecological problems and the terraforming uh, issues because the planet is going backwards and there's uh, it's it's in a crisis state. But these new robots um, that have been created with the gravitonic uh, brain are different and uh, they are to be used on an island called Purgatory where... Uh, a lot of this terraforming uh, is happening and the settlers are are working towards that. And there are new laws of robotics, uh, which are then put into the new robots. Uh, and they're called new law robots. And there are four laws instead. Uh, and they... Um, like the first law of uh, the three laws, the original three laws is a robot may not injure a human being or through an action, allow a human being to come to harm. The new laws say a robot may not injure a human being full stop. Number two of the original, a robot must obey the orders given it, uh, by uh, human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. The new law is a robot must co cooperate with human beings except where such cooperation would conflict with the first law, which is just, again, basically to reiterate, may not injure a human being. 
nothing about saying that you know by inaction uh the human being could get harmed uh number three of the original is a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not interfere with the first or second law and then the third one of the new law is very similar. It's a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the uh, with uh, with the first law, not the second law, because they don't have to obey humans. And then the fourth one is a robot may do anything it likes, except where such action would violate the first, second, or third laws. So uh, this now creates a robot that can do things. It's no longer subservient to humans, no longer a slave, as, um, as it's been described. So they can do things. They have free will, in other words, which opens up a can of worms that is not fully uh, yet um, looked at. And this is part one of a trilogy, so... I'm already up halfway through the second volume, Inferno. Um, so it's it's delving in deeper into this free will aspect. But it's interesting because um, it goes through like the whole history because they're saying that the uh, positronic brain is like an antiquated uh, thing. Like nobody even questions of changing it. Uh, but when there's this new ga uh, gravitonic uh, brain, people start are, are like the spacers are now fearing this as well uh like uh humans did first of all with the positronic brain and it's sort of like repeating history repeating itself with the new technology um and um roger mcbride allen does something kind of interesting because throughout the whole um saga of the positronic brains there's not much description of how they really work other than saying that the three laws are integral to the structure. And if you take the three laws out, uh, it, the, the, the brain will not work. And it's never really said anything more than that. Uh, Roger McBride Allen does go into a lot more detail and it makes a little more sense, but it's still, it's still lacking because it's, it's, it's a concept that I don't think, can it, it, it it's not tenable it's not tenable uh because it's basically saying that the three laws are like the uh, neurons in the human brain you take out the neurons the you know and and it doesn't work but yes but this is a code um that that's entered in so why can't another code you know substitute for that and still work you know, and, you know, that, that, but anyway, that's the suspension, the willing uh, suspension of disbelief for, you know, this kind of stuff uh, for science fiction and for this one. Uh, but he does do a damn good job of, of explaining it. Uh, that's for sure. And when I said about that, she conveniently has um, amnesia and she doesn't remember what happened, uh, the, this, this scientist, it's the mystery part the crime solving is contrived uh throughout is there's a lot of things you go yeah that's very convenient and oh why didn't they see that earlier you know why did it take so long for this uh so yeah so there is it it's contrived and it's it doesn't work that well as a crime sort of slash mystery at all um well, it does, but it's it, it's weak. Let's put it that way. I think it's weak. Uh, but it does move along pretty good because each chapter is not that long, but each chapter is split up into scenes and um, short scenes of things that are happening. Sometimes they move with the same characters into the second one, but usually it moves to someone else. So you're jumping around to different things that then sort of start coming together at the end, which is a usual tool of, of writing. But he does it quite well uh, for for that respect uh, with, um, you know, bringing, like, keeping, keeping the momentum going with the story. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I really like this. Like, I know it's been highly, uh, applauded as, um, as, uh, you know, um, a robot book, 
it's not as good as as you know when when Asimov uh, uh, does it for some reason. I don't know. I could be a bit biased there, but it's good. It's very good. It's it's by far, and I mean by far, by light years better than than the previous ones we read, like the uh, uh, Robot City books or the uh, uh, the other trilogy uh, that was done by uh, Tideman. Uh, yeah, those, those were very clunky and th let's not mention the Susan Calvin trilogy, which <sighs> missed opportunity there, but yeah, these, th well, so far this is very good. I really enjoy it. And, uh, it's interesting that the names like, you know, it's, it, it's like the, the planet is named after, uh, you know, Dante's character, you know, not characters, but, uh, uh, you know, Purgatory, uh, Haiti, everything is, is sort of named from that. But the, this, this, um, doctor, the scientist names her, her robots from Shakespeare characters, hence Caliban, hence Prospero, you know, shows up, hence, uh, you know, Donald. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's very good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased I'm reading this. This is the first time that I've read this. So this is something I probably will reread at some point when I do. Like, I, I fully intend to reread the Future History Project again. But I will leave out uh, some things. <laughs> but I will not leave out this one. Um, and as I say, it's so far the best one. And I'm halfway through now. Uh, Inferno. Um, Caliban's back. And there's... There's another uh, mystery and uh, a murder this time, so um, so yeah, so I'm I'm enjoying it uh, very much so. And has anybody else read this? If you're still ke uh, keeping up with the Future History Project, is the other question. Uh, but yeah, um, Caliban, Roger McBride Allen, worth reading. Thank you, BookTube.